question that everybody has been asking is about to be answered. What's been going on at Kings Dominion for the 2024 season? What? They've been closed for the past three months and today they're officially reopening for past members and then tomorrow for the official 2024 reopening to the general public. So excited! And a lot of things have been rumored to be going on inside the park. I'm just excited that the park is open, but we're definitely gonna be tackling some of the questions like the new pass holder perks, as well as the potential construction that started for a rumored 2025 coaster and many other things. But more importantly, let's just have fun enjoying the reopening of the park. So let's get inside the park, have some fun, and we'll address some of these questions. Let's go. Oop. Almost forgot. And as all the pass holders start rolling in, look at that skyline. Man, have I missed you, King's Dominion. We got the Eiffel Tower. We have Intimidator 305 or the soon to be something else 305 in the back or Project 305, whatever it's called. We got Dominator and Tombili as well. Let's make our way inside. All right, so we've made it in and I gotta say guys, it feels amazing to be back. We're definitely gonna get into the nitty gritty of all the information that we talked about outside, but just soaking it in really quick, it's a only pass holder event, so it's not going to be too crazy busy, I don't think. But I'm just excited to be back and get to walk around, bring you guys with me. And there's a lot to talk about. So let's start making our way and having some fun. And of course, we first have to stop and soak it in a little bit more with these beautiful fountains. Pay respect to the beautiful water features here at King's Dominion. As we continue our way through, I think we're going to make a beeline to Jungle Expedition, see if it's open and do a little exploration around there because there should be a lot changing or at least a lot that we could be talking about that will be changing in the coming future. And we're making our way through and of course we got to look up at the beautiful Eiffel Tower. I've missed you so much young lady. but. We are back and one of the reasons why I wanna make our way over to Jungle Expedition is this right here. Oops, check that out. That looks a little bit new. I don't believe that's been on the map before and it does kind of hint at some new exploration and construction that may be going on at Jungle Expedition. So let's start making our way back that way. have made it inside of Jungle Expedition. But before we start exploring, I did want to talk about one of the things that we wanted to discuss, which is the pass perks and the passes in general. So we're not going to do a deep dive into the differences, but this year there are some differences within the passes. Of course, we have our silver pass, which is the most economical, but has some limitations. And we have our gold pass, which is the best value. But this year we have the all new replacement to the platinum pass, which is the prestige pass. And now the prestige pass, which which is the highest pass no longer includes all the parks that is an additional add-on that you could purchase for around hundred dollars which is an interesting benefit now you could get yourself a gold pass instead of the highest pass and add that perk of all the parks which is what we actually decided to do there there is the benefit of the all new pass member um, lounge which we will be going to check out if it's open and they let us in so we could give you guys a sneak pre preview and maybe it would entice us to upgrade. But at the moment, we didn't see the value. So we ended up going with the best value, the gold pass. We added the food, the dining, as well as the multi-park pass, which I, I think it's called like the all-park passport or something like that. I forget. We actually bought it on our way over here. But I wanted to just touch on that. Some quick changes, some quick pass perks, and uh, this part, this pass. Um, also gets you like a designated entrance and some other cool things. Definitely a cool pass. I just liked it when it was easy, all inclu included, you know, simple. I didn't have to think about it. The, the platinum pass had everything all included. I didn't have to think about all these different add-ons. And then when you start looking at the add-ons and the face value of this, it starts to get fairly expensive. All right, guys, we are inside of Jungle Expedition and it feels amazing because the rumors seem to be true. There are some construction walls ahead of us. That 2025 rumored coaster may be 
starting now. Let's see if we can get a glimpse. I'm sure that now Reptilian is probably gonna be a super popular ride because you get that aerial view down. We might have to jump on and get a quick view of all the construction vehicles behind the construction walls here. Let me give you a view of what I'm seeing. And here we are, just across from the dining location and the plaza where Let's Get Wild typically is, we got some construction walls up and also a little sign to get you through the excavation dig site, uncovering new discoveries, it says. And it says the same thing over here. The Way Foundation must be hard at work putting up some footers, bringing in some track for a whole new, I don't know, volcano. Let's start making our way back and see if we could capture any up close look it does seem like a lot has been cleared out and these fences were put up pretty nicely i mean they did have three months to kind of get the ball rolling here so they had plenty of time and i'm excited to see what they're doing hopefully they make some type of announcement soon all right and here's a quick look back as tumbili makes its way Ooh, we might get a ride on Toombili, but we're definitely going to ride Reptilian in just a moment so we can see if we can capture any view behind this wall and give you guys some insight on what's going on. The wall is very intrusive. It comes out and makes this walking path fairly narrow. Good thing right now it's not busy back here, but I can only imagine this ride, Reptilian, is going to be getting a lot busier during the season with people being interested in what's going on back here. I'm sure with time it will become more visible. These walls can only block so much. And I also want to give a quick shout out to a friend of the channel. I got a bracelet. Ghost. Ghost was your name. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the bracelet. That is such a nice gesture. And not just that, it's customized to Eddie. So thank you so much for that. But let's get a ride on Reptilian and see if I can give you guys some insight on what's going on behind these walls. <laughs> All right, Reptilian might be one of the most underappreciated rides here because I forget how amazing and unique this ride is. These Bob said coasters are not gonna be around for much longer. So make sure that you come and get a ride on Reptilian. And with the construction going on next door, I think Reptilian is definitely gonna get some much needed attention from the riders. Maybe not any like touch-ups or anything, but from the riders for sure. Now let's talk about what we were able to see in the form of construction. Now, from what you can see from this corner right here, it's kind of everything that's going on. You kind of see through the cracks, but I'm not gonna like push it and go through the cracks. Right now, there is basically just some prep work going on. Let's see. There you can see some of the vehicles, but not much going on in the form of actual physical construction. FYI, this tunnel right here is actually remnants left over from volcano the previous blast coaster that is now rumored to be replaced by this construction that's going on back there but the area has definitely been cleaned out there's definitely like rebar and different like um i guess they're they're just kind of like preparing the area for construction at the moment but no true construction has started and that's typical you know the park has just opened up and they have plenty of time they have the whole entire year to really get the ball moving on the project if it actually is happening that is Something is definitely going on back there. We just don't know what. So we'll continue to speculate, keep close an eye behind these walls and the construction as it moves along. But I'm excited. 2025 is the anniversary year of King's Dominion, 50 years of King's Dominion. And this should be a nice big surprise that's coming along to celebrate that 25th anniversary. But that being said, let's keep making our way. There's some other things to talk about here in the jungle expedition area. Ah, oh, and check it out, that answers that. I was thinking that Arachnidia was actually closed, but no, it's just on the opposite side of the construction walls. You can't get to it from the other portion of like where the Tumbili Plaza is, but it is right over here. Now, I wanna talk about one other thing really quick as we make our way over here. Now, this area right here, which is as we entered the area that was fenced off, is not visible from Reptilian. So we were able to see over here and not much was going on besides the land being cleared. But I hear rumors that there may already be footers for a coming coaster behind this wall right here. Unfortunately, we can't see, so that's all speculation. But if it is, that means that they're coming along really quickly and soon we should be able to see a lot more of what's going on behind this wall. And as we make our way to the very end of this portion of Jungle Expedition, it is no longer Jungle Expedition, which is one of the reasons why I'm sure you guys have heard by now, certain rides 
sound like they're going to be getting rethemed. Nothing has been said of Flight of Fear, but I-305 has officially been announced, will be changing, and they haven't announced exactly what the retheming is going to be. Over at Carowinds, they did retheme it, and I forget, was it Thunder... Thunder Striker is what they rethemed it to. And by the way, we were over at Carowinds for the reopening of their park, so make sure to check out that video. But as you can see, boom, the sign for Intimidator 305 is gone. But, or I guess I should say, the artist formerly known as Intimidator 305, that being said, it is open for riding. So let's go on back and get our first ride on the artist formerly known as I-305. so we are going to jump on project 305 is the temporary name and there is some hints here that i'm starting to notice as far as the sign kind of playing with our emotions here you can see that there's this new yellow coloring the ride doesn't really have that specific yellow coloring and there's a specific animal that has that type of yellow covering and will or coloring and we'll zoom in right here what is this pattern that you see around the sign let me know down in the comments i know what it is <coughs> Excuse me, but let me know down in the comments if you notice what I'm talking about. All right, we're in line. Excited to get our first ride on Project 305 or the artist formerly known as Intimidator 305 or I-305. But that sign is definitely a little bit of a dead giveaway because there's definitely some type of animal print and it would be very fitting if this ride gets an animal retheming. So let's make our way over. We're gonna do our front of the line ride. All right, in our first ride on Project 305, the all new coaster, kind of, for 2024. The retheming, if you didn't get what I was talking about, and you haven't left it down in the comments by now, that Project 305 sign has some very distinguishable patterns on it, an animal pattern, which makes a lot, a lot of sense with it being the end of Jungle Expedition. This ride and Flight of Fear kind of don't fit into the whole theming, and they should. They should start changing it so that these two rides either fit in or get replaced. Seems like this one is going to get rethemed, and the pattern behind that sign, from my observation, looks like cheetah print. And that yellow looks like a cheetah's color as well. So, will this ride be getting changed into cheetah? Who knows? That hasn't been announced, but I think it seems like a, a high likelihood. And Candy Apple Grove, how I missed you. We start making our way to the other side of the park now, and what I want to make a beeline towards is the Passholder Lounge for the Prestige Pass. So this pass is not going to be available to me, but I may upgrade for this pass. I've heard great things about it. I've ran into a couple of friends, Clint Novak and Sherry Novak from Happily Ever Novak. Make sure to check out their channel for the pass details. They actually go into a lot more detail on all the different perks, but we're going to make our way over to the Prestige Lounge and check it out. See if maybe it entices us to upgrade our pass to that Prestige Pass. And here we are, Old Dominion Inn, the VIP lounge. Today, because it is a preview weekend, they are just letting in any old riff riffraff, but tomorrow they will be locking it down. It will be only for the prestige pass holders. So let's get a little preview and see what it has to offer. All right, and we step on in, and it looks like they have remodeled the place nicely. You're good. Check it out. Oh, look, another... Eiffel Tower. I do like the white and black aesthetic and it does look like the second floor is blocked off. I wonder if that's a permanent thing. For now, it looks like it's just the first floor and I do like that it is an interior lounge. Check out these couches. Oh man, and as I'm checking it out further, you got the beautiful couches, the nice coffee tables, and you got plenty of TVs. So far, I've already seen like four TVs in here. A nice sign that says, relax, and oh, I'm sure you can relax in here. And you also have the control, so you have control over what's going on the TV if you need it to relax. And check it out, a beautiful view of the park. You can see the park ongoers, and I think... One of the cool things is not only is it this interior space, there's also an exterior space. So let's go check that out as well. 
And here we are, it's the patio area, and they got TVs, fireplaces, and whatnot out here. So you'll be able to enjoy this during the winter time, and during hot, it does get a little bit cold with this water feature out here. I do like that water feature, they have like little turtles and animals in there. Let's get a closer look at some of these tables and the fireplaces. All right, and check us out, we're on like little rocking chairs, this is nice. The rocking chairs are with the fireplaces, and then you got the TVs, the covered area. Man, I gotta say, this is a little enticing. I'm thinking maybe, maybe, we, we got a budget that we're working on so that we could bring you guys the most amount of content. But if you guys are watching a little bit more, maybe my budget will go up and I'll be able to afford upgrading to that prestige pass. Who knows? But it is tempting. I gotta say, it's really nice in here. And I almost forgot, just behind me, we have another update that one of our viewers actually pointed out to me, Victoria's. One of our favorite establishments to grab some pizza and have a nice accommodating area to sit has been completely rethemed. Let's make our way inside and check out what the new Victoria's looks like for 2024. And whoa, whoa, wee, whoa, look at the new sign for Victoria's Pizza. I gotta say, I am feeling it and seeing what I can see from the outside. Wow, this place looks spectacular. Check it out. We've got the big reveal. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves some food, and then we'll talk about the changes for the events, but I gotta say, I love what they've done with Victoria's. And here we have the updated menu. A lot of what we remember with the pizza and the two breadsticks, but also now we have an antipasta, I'm not sure if that was here last year, and a piadini, not too sure what that is, but check it out, we have all the options laid out for us. I think we're gonna grab some pizza. All right, so we just got done eating at Victoria's Pizza, and I gotta say, I love this sign right here. The sign that they've added for Victoria's Pizza now with the new remodel. The inside looks amazing, the outside looks nice and refreshed, and they also have some new food items. We were gonna do the pizza, but we ended up actually doing the piadoni, I think it's what it's called. It's kind of like a stromboli. It's like sausage, a marinara sauce, and cheese inside of like a wrap. And the inside was really good. The pita was a little bit dry, but that just could be a one-time experience. Overall, the, the item seemed like a good bang for your buck, and if you have a dining plan like we do, it, it filled me up nice and full. So, Victoria's, I look forward to checking out a couple more items and trying the pizza again. I didn't get to try the pizza, the pizza today, and I do love the pizza from Victoria's in the past. Hopefully, the new pizza is just as good. All right, let's keep making our way to the other side of the park. We got a little bit more to talk about before we end today's video. And we keep making our way, and it looks like all the rides are going in the distance. Check it out, we have the Ferris wheel, and I always forget the name of this ride over here, but the very scary one that goes very, very high. But yeah, we, we did end up getting the dining plan and we got the drink plans. And one of the things last year that I enjoyed a lot was getting the, um, the ICs. So if on our way out, we run into one of the icy stands, we're definitely gonna grab one of those so we could enjoy it, even though it is a little cold tonight. All right, and on that note, we head back to the VIP lounge. It's a little bit cold outside, so we're gonna warm up, and we're gonna talk about the events coming this year. There's some new events, some changes to prior events. One that we kind of hinted to is for our beloved haunt but let's actually pull up the website real quick and our first event is obviously the opening of the park which is this weekend then we have spring break which is march 29th through april 7th then we have soak city's opening on may 25 which i'm super excited for because last year ollie had an amazing time enjoying i or i was about to say i three five enjoying soak city and uh the the kids area this year he could walk so he's going to enjoy it even more um then we have the july 4th celebration which is obviously the weekend of july 4th and through the 6th grand carnival which was rumored not to be coming will be coming from july 13th through the 28th so summertime and then the all new halloween event which is the tricks and treats um event for their halloween time uh, this we talked about over at carowinds as well when they reopened they're going to have a similar event so it's like a huge trick-or-treat treat event for the kids um as well as halloween haunt returns of course it does it's one of the most popular uh events here it's the 10 best uh choice by theme parks for a halloween event 
And in a change this year, they're gonna go back to including it with your regular day admission. So you'll be able to do the Tricks and Treats and Halloween Haunt all together without any interruption. Last year, they attempted to try the separately ticketed event route and it really didn't go too well. Um, and then, of course, Winterfest and New Year's Eve. But I really like that they're changing Halloween Haunt back um, unless the event really, really justifies it and they invest a ton of money into it, it should not be a separately ticketed event. Uh, that's just my opinion, but I'm excited that the events are all coming back and the lineup for this year looks amazing. We're glad that Grand Carnival is returning as well. But on, on that note, guys, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you enjoy Haunt, check out this video right here. Thank you so much for coming along with me. I'm super excited that Kings Dominion is open again. I'll see you guys on the next one. But up till the next one, don't forget to ask yourself, have you been entertained?